This book can be incredibly wholesome and horrifying. If you want to get into the Cosmere or see why people like Brandon Sanderson so much or get a friend into the Cosmere, start with this book. Now, on the opposite end, if you're a fan of this book, The Little Prince, uh, yeah, you will love the writing in Tress. I wouldn't say it's one for one, but it is really reminiscent of the style of The Little Prince, and I'll explain in a little bit why. Tress. This, this, this is a book about a heist. It is a book about being a pirate. Uh, it is a book with found family, which is one of my favorite tropes, um, and it is paced ruthlessly efficiently. Uh, I did not want to put this book down at any point. <laughs> Literally, at no point did I want to put this book down. Um, and if you're wondering where the actual bookmark is, I'm using a ruler right now, but it's in my copy of Rhythm of War over there, which I can cover in a different video. This book reminded me of why I actually love Sanderson's writing. Um, it brought me back to the wonders of like discovering a new world in the Cosmere and... Trust does an amazing job at prose. The Cosmere in general, my friend introduced me to the Stormlight Archive and then Mistborn via the graphic audio audiobooks. And if you don't know what those are, holy crap, you should check them out. They, these books feature a full cast of voice actors, uh, full music, like soundtrack and sound effects. It's they, I think their slogan is a movie in your mind, and they could not be more on target with that. And the reason I bring up the, uh, that audiobook is because when I started reading Stormlight and Mistborn, uh, I was doing kind of read-alongs with the audiobooks. And doing those read-alongs really helped with kind of filling the gaps in those prose. And uh, the reason I bring that up is because Tress, I think, just does an amazing job with the prose in, in general. You can tell that Sanderson put a ton of love into this book, um, and that goes into kind of like the origin of the book. He was he was uh, having a movie night, I guess, with his family, with his wife, uh, and they were watching, I guess, the Princess Diaries. And here's one of the comparisons that I want to make. It's it has nothing to do with the Princess Diaries. The thing I want to compare it to is the very famous book, uh, so famous in fact that I did not hear about it until a few weeks before I read Trust. But it is uh, one of the most sold books in the world. It's The Little Prince. And if you don't know what this book is, like me, it's about a pilot who's stranded in the desert uh, and awakes one morning to see a, a stranger um, standing next to him. And it's this, it's this world-traveling little prince. Um, and so I don't think I've seen anything about Sanderson talking about the little prince, but if you read this book... It is extremely reminiscent of the writing style from the first half of this book. Once you get kind of like, honestly, like 30-ish percent in through Tress, it's very much like, it's it's kind of back to Sanderson style. And But like the, ver like the first, like I would say first, third, first half of the book is very like, it's really cool because you're, you're in this mind of, no spoilers by the way, but you're in this kind of mind of like, all right, you don't quite know who the, um, the narrator is. It's one of those un known narrator circumstances, uh, yet he has this kind of almost like childlike wonderment of the world um, or perspective on the world where it's like, why are people the way they are? And I'll, I'll, I'll read you some quotes uh, from from The Little Prince where it's uh, where it's very, it's it's mocking, but in, in, in a really similar, but not in, not in the quite all-knowing way. It's a very uh, full of wisdom way of, it's a very wisdom-filled perspective, but you can tell that there's not that level of like, I already know where this is going, so I'm just gonna make fun of these guys. This, this, it's the opposite side of the coin where it's like, this is how the world should be according to this kid, um, this innocent little kid, and I don't understand why all grown-ups are like this. And honestly, to a point, I feel like we were all like this, and it feels like Hoyt is just on the other side of the spectrum. He's gone all the way through it to the point where he can just make fun of anyone aka most grown-ups who think that what they're doing is important. If I've told you these details about Asteroid B612, and if I've given you its number, it's on account of the grown-ups. Grown-ups like numbers. When you tell them about a new friend, when you tell them about a new friend, they never ask questions about what really matters. They never ask, what does his voice sound like? What games does he like best? How, oh, does he collect butterflies? They ask, how old is he? How many brothers does he have? 
How much does he weigh? How much does his father make? Only then do they think they know him. If you tell grown-ups, I saw a beautiful red brick house with geraniums at the windows and doves on the roof, they wouldn't be able to tell you to, they wouldn't be able to imagine such a house. You have to tell them, I saw a house worth a hundred thousand francs, and then they'll exclaim, what a pretty house. And I think one of the coolest things about Sanderson's prose in the beginning of this book is when you're kind of dealing with this unknown narrator, you, you can see this kind of wonderment in him, where it's like, yeah, why, like, the people that this narrator have has met throughout his life there's these tendencies of them to kind of act in these ways and it's like that these humans are just being most of the time they're humans as we know in the cosmere not everyone is a human but it's it's like why do these do these things that seem so simple but are so dumb and they they do these things that make them feel important when they aren't important uh and it's this really cool outlook on the world now they're similar in sort of a very different way um as we'll come to find out here's where we're entering a little bit of a spoiler territory uh hoyt is this um world traveling world hopping like universe traveling uh kind of godlike deity who's who's lived a thousand lives and a thousand different personalities and he knows all of these things and he talks about the people that he meets and the, and the categories of these people he meets the people he generalizes right he talks about them in the sense in a mocking sense um just because he knows i mean he knows so much so just to list off a few quotes there's there's one where it's like uh, here the mansion squatted like a corpulent frog atop its lily tress wasn't certain why the duke liked it up here it was closer to the smog so maybe he liked the similarly tempered company climbing all this way was difficult, but judging by how the Duke's family fit their clothing, perhaps they figured they could use the exercise. Was asking a talking rat why he could talk impolite? She probably would have been offended if someone had asked her why she couldn't talk. This man was exactly the sort of person who thought every woman in the room was thinking about him, which they were, as each desperately hoped he would head in the other direction. So those are some quotes from Hoyd. Now, one of these quotes is actually really interesting because uh, the little prince finds himself on this world, right? This this world where it's this tiny world that rotates real quick. Uh, a day is a minute, so like um, the day-night cycle is literally, what, 30 seconds each? And he, he meets this guy who lives on this planet whose job it is to li light a lamp every time it's nighttime. And he goes, oh, it used to be, um, that was my, it's, it's my duty. I, I light the lamp at night and extinguish it during the day. The days have been getting shorter, and now this job is really, like, this This job is hell, basically. Uh, and there's this quote here, it goes, Now that man, as the little prince is basically about to leave, that man would be despised by all the other people that he's met. By the king, the very vain man, the drunkard, the businessman, but he's the only one who doesn't strike me as ridiculous. Perhaps it's because he's thinking of someone besides himself. This man is the only man I might have made my friend, but his planet really is too small. Um, and it's this really cool thing where it's like you realize that Hoyt has these, this respect, at least seemingly every time he pops up in a story, he has this respect for the characters that he's placed alongside with and that he's decided to stick along with, that he's decided to follow. Um, as Hoyt alludes to in this book, he it's not like he knows everything, he just knows how to find the correct people the right people and stick real close to them uh, which we can see in a lot of sanderson's other cosmere books but i really like that kind of allusion to hey here's this thing and like i just respect the people that care for others because all these other people that think that they're doing something important they're ridiculous and i'm gonna make fun of them <laughs> and i love that but yeah, Sanderson's prose in this book, I think, is a, is a major improvement. He does amazing. He's extremely descriptive. The narrator of the book, as you'll come to learn, is this person named Hoyt. And for those of you who are well invested in the Cosmere, as I imagine most of you will be, um, Hoyt is this, well, he's the world hopper. And like he says, a story doesn't live until it's imagined in someone's mind. And one of my and some of my favorite parts of uh, the Stormlight series is when Wit is involved, when Hoyt is involved in telling all of these stories uh, from his from his. I mean, he's a, he's a what what do they call it? Like a world, not the world hopper, the world singer. Is that what they called him and Sigil? It's like they're like they're 
the way that he tells stories, it's like it completely blows uh, like everything that's happening in that current state of the book out of the water. Even if a character's going through depression, it's just like, hey, listen to the story. And you're like, what the fu- Oh, right. And <laughs> it's just this amazing, like, the entire book is told through the story. And it's almost this cycle that you can tell Hoyt has gone through where it's like, okay, he started where he was, wherever he was, and then he became this world traveler. And as he's traveled all of these worlds, you can see that there's just there's been so much influence on him where it's like you can tell that Hoyt is very childlike and the way he speaks is is very like the world is much simpler than people make it out to be and we should appreciate these certain things and people value certain stupid things way too much uh which i think is a big it, it's like a big piece of that the little prince it's like here's what it was like to be a child and here's what it would look like if a child was coherent enough to hold like a real good conversation with an adult and hoyd brings us that childlike perspective but instead of being a child of innocence he's this hyper experienced godlike deity world hopper and it's so cool to just see the parallels in that type of storytelling um yeah super cool and now that we're in spoiler territory i i'm very excited to see how sanderson plans to incorporate the aethers in the future um i'm currently working on reading with rhythm of war uh, i am pretty new to the cosmere i've pretty much only read like stormlight novellas um books one through three i'm about 70 percent of the way through four and then i've read the first three mistborn books none of era two yet so if you have any sanderson recommendations for me a certain order or cool things non-spoilery for the things that i haven't read yet let me know thanks for watching